Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here please do hit that subscribe button and if you enjoy this video don't forget to give it a like. Today I will be running through the Prometheus deleted scenes. Now this is everything that we know for sure, the definitive deleted scenes that were actually filmed and, and made it to essentially close to the final cut of the film. All of these can be found either on the DVD or the Blu-ray. The original opening of the film was in fact a slightly longer scene and it showed several engineers instead of just one which we got in the final film. In this particular scene an elder hands the sacrificial engineer the dark liquid while several other engineers can be seen standing in the background. Some of these are thought to be women. The sequence of the sacrificial engineer disintegrating is slightly extended in this footage as is the footage of his DNA dividing in the water. Scene. This particular scene was in fact cut to keep the engineers more mysterious, but it can be found on the Blu-ray release of the film. There was also footage filmed of the elder engineer speaking, however this never made it to any form of home video release. A very very tiny scene and something which could be thought to be insignificant was cut from the film which featured Holloway walking up to Shaw and saying you're smiling. This was to take place immediately before Shaw takes Holloway into the cave to show him what she has discovered. This mainly just serves as a little bit more of character development between Shaw and Holloway however it was deemed to be cut from the film. David was perhaps one of the better additions to Prometheus and part of him wandering around the Prometheus ship was something which most people enjoyed. There was an extended scene of David crying while he watched Lawrence of Arabia alone on the Prometheus and later to be seen drinking a milky substance similar to Ash in Alien. Now this would have been an interesting scene mainly because David is thought to have absolutely no emotions but for him to be crying while watching Lawrence of Arabia could have potentially added more setup for his descent into madness in Alien Covenant. Now here I'll deviate slightly, there was in fact a scene cut before filming took place which was to show David waking Wayland before the Prometheus reaches LV-223 and informing him that they were nearly there. Wayland would then tell David not to wake him again until they have found what he is looking for aka a live engineer and then he goes back into hypersleep at which point we then enter Wayland's dream David is walking along a beautiful tropical beach wearing his jumpsuit and a pair of sunglasses he would look out to sea and watch a speedboat pull up to the shore a bikini clad woman on board would ask David if he is here to see him which David confirms and the boat then takes David out to a huge luxury yacht where he finds five more beautiful women feeding a young Wayland grapes. The two men then have a brief conversation in which Wayland curses David for waking him prematurely. This particular scene actually explains why Guy Pearce was hired to play an aged Wayland because originally we were going to be seeing the younger version of Wayland that little bit more. It's interesting that they chose to cut this because it would have added a little bit of levity but I guess the powers that be thought it prudent to cut this to add a little bit of a suspense and a twist to the reveal of Guy Pearce's Wayland still being alive, which was kind of moot in the end point. There was an extension of the Milburn and Fifield scene where Milburn and Fifield first introduced themselves to each other on the Prometheus, which showed Milburn complaining that his fingers were still numb after waking from hypersleep, before pointing out that he'd never been in cryo for so long before Fifield would then respond that no one has been in hypersleep for such a long period of time. This is interesting because of course it shows the leaps and bounds that the Wayland Industries is willing to take to go on this mission. The original scene where Vickers walks into the room where Yannick is decorating his little Christmas tree was in fact shortened in the final cut of the film. There is a missing bit where Vickers is telling him that the mission briefing is about to start but Yannick then replies that he doesn't really care and he's only here to fly the ship. He would then take the tree into the main room where several of the mercenaries are sitting and puts it on the table telling them that it is the season to be jolly boys. Finally he hangs a small angel decoration on the tree. This is one of those scenes which can actually be seen on the DVD or Blu-ray. In terms of the briefing there was some dialogue between Shaw and Holloway which was trimmed from the briefing scene including Shaw saying they're gonna think we're crazy before they give their presentation to the team. Holloway reassures her and later Fifield correctly identified the star map and there's an alternate shot of Shaw saying not a map an invitation. So as you can see again just that little bit more of scene setting between all of the characters. It's a shame this was cut because these little touches really do make a film, I believe anyway. 
After the briefing, there was a scene cut between Holloway and Shaw. Shaw would complain to Holloway in a corridor aboard the Prometheus about the fact that he did not back her up during the meeting. Again, just that little bit more character building between the two, showing that they do have some conflict, which would help the later scenes where Holloway and Shaw discuss the fact that Shaw is unable to procreate. This is, again, really, really quite important, and it's interesting that this was cut because it's such a tiny, tiny scene, it wouldn't have added much to the runtime. There was some footage of Yannick being filmed on the bridge as the Prometheus has landed and basically just states the Prometheus has landed. Again, this this scene doesn't really matter and the reason why it was cut I can I can kind of see. Interestingly enough, the film he has basically just heard saying the Prometheus has landed off screen. So I again I can see why this was cut and changed. It's fairly insignificant. Now the next scene that was cut does actually add a little bit more to the film and it's, it's a shame that this was cut because there was a scene where Milburn actually discovered an indigenous worm first in some black liquid. He's incredibly enthusiastic about it as of course mankind has never discovered extraterrestrial life larger than bacteria before in this universe and he then puts one of the creatures into a container to study back on the ship. This particular footage basically expands Milburn's character. It explains why he is so happy to interact with the hammerpede that we see later on and it also makes it clear that the worms are indigenous to LV-223 and that the dark liquid is responsible for mutation rotating them. This can actually be found on the Blu-ray. This is such a shame that this scene was cut because it really, it changes, it changes what was a plot hole to something which actually makes an awful lot of sense. And this being cut, again, it makes absolutely no sense. It's one of those things which should have been left. There was a tiny, tiny sentence removed where Holloway removes his helmet and he basically breathes in the air and he says, that's the sweetest air I've ever tasted. Again, this doesn't really matter. This being cut doesn't make a big impact on the final film. Now, a lot of people will remember that instead of finding a green crystal in the headroom in the trailers, there was a ceremonial bowl. Now, this is the same one which was used by the sacrificial engineer at the beginning of the film, and this was cut entirely. It was swapped out for a, a green crystal. The reason behind this isn't clear, but I'm fairly certain this was just to add to the ambiguous nature of the headroom. It's a shame because, again, the sacrificial bowl would have made an awful lot more sense rather than just a green crystal. Now, as David studies the urns in the headroom, there was footage removed of David smiling while observing the black goo oozing from one of the vases. There is also behind the scenes footage of him tasting and smelling a piece before looking around, which we got snippets of this in the final film. But yeah, I mean, him smirking at it, I guess it's a shame that they cut this, but it also adds just that little bit more to David's mischievous and devious nature. It would have been nice to have seen this in the final film. There was a scene cut later on in the film where Milburn and Fifield are in a tunnel after they've left the main group. They discover a piece of shed skin on the ground which Milburn picks up. And this is presumably the skin from a hammerpede, but again, it's not dead certain. This really would have been a good addition because it adds that sense of omen, something lurking in the background. And it also makes me wonder why certain things were changed for an ambiguous nature rather than others, because this still could have given an ambiguous nature, but would have also made a little bit more sense. There was a scene shot where Shaw tells the Prometheus crew a story, an ancient African myth about how the world came to be created. She goes on to explain that she has spent her whole life looking for what they have found, life on another planet, and that humanity is no longer alone. She raises a toast with the crew and then has a brief discussion with Yannick about how she almost died going to retrieve the engineer head when the storm hit the ship. Holloway then cuts in with some disparaging remarks, angered of course by the fact that you know, they'd only come so far to find the creatures all dead. And again, this just adds that little bit more scene setting to what we see later, where essentially Holloway just becomes a dick in the final film. All of this little character interaction is really, really important to his arc and how he just how he just appears to have changed in the final film. This is really important and it should have stayed. It also makes more sense because David is in this scene and then he then retrieves more alcohol for Holloway, which is later seen. So it's a shame that this was cut. It, I feel it's something which is important, but hey, never mind. There was an earlier alternate take of Shaw and Holloway arguing in their room, which made the scene far more confrontational. Holloway would enter 
while Shaw is watching a video of the engineer holograms and Shaw chastises him for being drunk again following on from the scene earlier. They would talk about the video and theorise what might have happened to the creatures and what they might have been running away from. Shaw mentions their head they inspected and why it might have exploded, theorising that a virus or genetic infection wiped out the engineers, but Holloway replies that he just doesn't care, still upset because of course he was hoping to find more on the planet. Finally, he would lament that the engineers aren't gods at all and that humanity was merely their experiment. He then asks Shaw why she came on the mission, before remarking that she came to ask a god why he took her mother and father. Shaw angrily slaps him and tries to run out of the room, but Holloway grabs her. She struggles briefly before they start to kiss. This scene is actually on the DVD Blu-ray. Some of this scene would have been nice to see in terms of them theorising exactly what wiped out the engineers. I can see why part of it was cut because it plays into the tropes of women essentially being verbally abused before falling into a man's arms. I can see why that bit was cut, but the theorising part should have stayed. It's a shame that that was cut from the film. Of course, we know that Holloway drank a lot, and in these alternate scenes, we know how just how much he was drinking. The scene where Holloway discovered something in his eye was slightly extended. In this deleted scene, after speaking to Yannick over the radio, Shaw would then go over to Holloway and tenderly ask him if he is okay, Holloway would say that he just thinks he's hung over. This is actually on the Blu-ray and again probably would have just expanded that little bit more their interaction and shown that they do actually love each other. There was a tiny scene which showed David's objective. David would be exploring one of the tunnels in the engine complex when Vickers then contacts him over the radio from the Prometheus. We see part of this. She would warn him that the infected Holloway is at risk of contaminating the ship before asking if he has located his objective. David says he has and that it's now time to wake Wayland. I assume they removed this because they were looking to do that reveal that Wayland was still alive, the incredibly obvious reveal, but obviously they removed it due to that. Again, one of those things which because of what they were setting up later in the film was removed, it doesn't make much sense. I would have liked to have seen this a little bit more, but never mind. There was a tiny alternate shot filmed of Vicar saying changing into what? Fairly insignificant, not too important there. There was another scene after Vickers kills Holloway. She's sitting alone in her room, clearly distressed by what has happened. This would have been great to see because it shows that Vickers isn't merely just a robotic person and would have dispelled those rumours that she was in fact a synthetic. Again, it just adds that little bit more human touch to the characters and it's a shame that this would cut its important stuff. Yannick would then visit her but she turns him away telling him that she isn't in the mood for coffee to which Yannick responds it's a good thing it's rum then. She relents and lets him in and he begins telling her a story about when he was in the military to take her mind off of Holloway. He talks about a particular operation he was on where scientists were working on some secret weapon in a secure compound at the base where he was stationed. One day things went wrong and an emergency evacuation was ordered and as Yannick made his escape, he saw the scientists were still locked inside the compound, screaming to be let out. After boarding the evacuation ship and flying off, he saw the officer on board detonate a bomb which would obliterate the compound and he then stated just cause some idiot spilt something. Yannick would then point out the relevance of the story to Vickers, basically saying that this is what happened on LV-223 to the engineers. This would have been a fantastic scene to see in the film. It would have added a lot more to Yannick's character, especially his nature of looking to protect and save humanity and killing himself in the process. It also would have made sense for him just blindly theorising this stuff because, of course, in the film we do see Yannick saying, yeah, it got out, etc, etc. But if we had this as the backstory behind it, it would have made an awful lot more sense rather than him just plucking this stuff out of his ass. A shame this was cut. I feel that this is really, really important stuff. Later in this scene, David and Chance would then interrupt over the radio and tell Yannick about some seismic and thermal activity that they have detected below the moon's surface, about a kilometre away. David would then ask Vickers, is he awake? course referring back to Wayland, leading Yannick to question who they are talking about but David tells him that it's not his concern. Again an incredible shame that this was cut. Uh, it would have added so much more background to Yannick's character. This is actually on the Blu-ray in the deleted scenes. There was a shot of Shaw crying and clasping her hands basically as if she was praying. Uh, these were featured prominently in several of the trailers for Prometheus but they didn't appear anywhere in the film itself. So tiny little thing that was cut but 
fairly insignificant and just kind of adds to Shaw's character being somewhat religious. There were some shots between Wayland and David. Basically, David gave Wayland a pill to swallow. Again, nothing too interesting. It just adds to that whole reveal that they were going for. There was actually an extended scene which showed David and Ford helping Peter into the body brace when Vickers enters. Wayland would have remarked that the last time they spoke, she said he was nothing but a silly old fool chasing fairy tales. He sends David and Ford out, and then alone, Vickers would tell him that she truly is sorry and that she came to say goodbye as she's convinced that Wayland will die on this mission if he goes out to visit the engineer. Wayland comments that she has a very negative outlook, to which Vickers responds, maybe you should look at the thing squealing next door and tell me how positive you feel of course referring to the trilobite she then rather coldly states that a king has his reign and then he dies she tells him she used to respect and look up to him but now she sees him as nothing more than a scared old man this is on the dvd blu-ray would have added a lot to that scene uh, again would have just expanded it that bit further and something which I feel is a shame that was cut. Of course a lot of people are aware that the Fifield character would originally have mutated similar in design to something somewhat of a xenomorph. His head would become bulbous and rounded, be covered in some form of a kind of translucent membrane. Uh, the earlier design bears quite a lot of similarities to a xenomorph drone but not. The attack sequence with the original creature can actually be found on the Blu-ray. Additionally, the scene where Fivefoot attacks the Prometheus, it would originally take place later in the film, when Wayland and his mercenaries head out to see the surviving engineer, which then explains the tiny little goof in the film where several of the mercenaries are killed during the attack, and then later they appear in Wayland's room kind of removing that plot hole. A massive shame that this was overlooked for the final film. A, a huge, huge oversight. Moving on, there was a scene where David explores the Juggernaut and he stops to take a look at one of the engineer's suits, which would have been good. It would have shown us that there are engineer suits. I guess they later use these again in the Alien Covenants, but it would have explained, I guess, what the engineer was wearing. Now, of course, the scene that everyone talks about in these videos is that the engineer speaking to David and Wayland. The conversation between David and the last engineer has... It's, it's everywhere, but it is actually expanded upon in this particular deleted scene. David tells the engineer, at Wayland's request, that they have come to the planet just as the engineers asked. The engineer gets out of the stasis tube and, of course, stumbles forward. This is what we see before asking in his own language why they came. This is then interrupted by Shaw, which we've seen in the final film. Wayland would tell David to explain why they have come. David tells the engineer that Wayland wants to live forever. Wayland further elaborates that his company made David from nothing and states that he and the engineer are superior beings, that they are gods and gods never die. The scene would then continue as seen in the official release of the film where the engineer kills everybody while Shaw escapes. This can be seen on the DVD and the Blu-ray. One of the images which is floating around on the internet is of an engineer in the midst of the Juggernaut crash. This was a deleted scene. Basically, the Juggernaut would crash and grind to a halt. The engineer would pick himself up and heads outside to hunt for shore. Um, this would have been good, I guess. Just a little bit more screen time for the engineers would have been nice to see. But again, one of those things that was cut for, I guess, runtime purposes. The final confrontation between Shaw and the last engineer was actually a lot longer and it involved a physical fight rather than just Shaw opening the med bay to the trilobite. The scene would start with Shaw packing a bag as we've seen but then she would hear a sound somewhere in the pod trilobite of course still in the med pod room she then picks up an axe again which we've kind of seen in the theatrical version however she would then head inside pausing to drink some vodka from the bar before injecting herself with more pain medicine again this is important to have been in the final film because it shows why she is able to do what she is doing in the theatrical version she then goes to the med bay door sees the trilobite which we see in the theatrical version after david then tells her that the last engineer is coming for her shaw hides behind the bar's counter and the last engineer soon enters the escape module and begins searching for her but is distracted by the video of the young girl playing the violin that is playing on the screen which we've seen in the film David interrupts over the radio, which then alerts the engineer to Shaw's whereabouts, and the two then fight. 
Shaw uses the axe and the engineer just his hands. The fight continues as a chase around the pod's corridors through malfunctioning doors, but eventually the engineer catches Shaw, overpowers her and pins her to the wall, his hands gripped around her head. At that moment, Shaw releases the trilobite, which is what we see in the final theatrical version. There was also some great footage filmed of the engineer basically discovering books scattered across the escape pod's floor and pausing to look over one, although this footage is absent from any deleted scene on the home video release, but we can see images of it so we know that it was filmed. This would have been great, it would have added a lot more depth to the engineer character, although obviously the engineer doesn't really do much in, and obviously dies, but it would have added a lot more just to that character in terms of its curiosity, its inspection of its race that it created. Those things would have been nice to see. So there you have it guys, that is a brief rundown of everything we didn't see in the final Prometheus film. Last time I did one of these videos, I just discussed the Prometheus film on a whole and the alternate script. So I thought it would be nice to discuss all of the deleted scenes. If you haven't already, please do check them out on the DVD and Blu-ray. Like I said, I think it's important that some of these things were left in the film. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. Do you feel like I do? Some of this stuff would have been important and would have added a lot more, would have made a lot more sense, or were you happy with the final film that we got. As always, guys, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date on all the world of pop culture and movie news. As always, I'm Mr. H, and I will catch you in the next video.